In this country, we're learning more about the damaging consequences of inadequate medical care offered to minority communities. And today, we're focusing on skin care. While African Americans make up 13% of the U.S. population, only 3% of dermatologists nationwide are black. And nearly half of all dermatologists report feeling their medical training did not properly prepare them to treat darker skin, which can lead to increased chances of misdiagnosis or lack of treatment. And that's exactly what happened to one California man who was misdiagnosed for years. Despite seven years of treatments, Shane Bloomfield's skin discoloration remained a mystery to multiple dermatologists. So I looked like a crispy critter, um, a burn victim, was embarrassed to walk down the hall. His last doctor simply gave up. He stood right in front of me and said, I can't help you anymore. There was a, a you know, hopelessness and then a little glimmer of anger. Shane was finally referred to Dr. Netta Ebeluk, the director of USC Skin of Color and Pigmentary Disorders program at Keck Medicine. Hi, good morning, Mr. Broomfield. How are you? So nice to see you. Right away, Dr. Ebeluk recognized Shane had something more commonly found in melanin-rich skin, lichen planus pigmentosus, which causes darkening, as well as related scarring type of hair loss called lichen planopilaris. I think there was just immediate relief, um, just in the, to even just have a name to put towards it like what it actually is that he has, the fact that the two things were connected, which he never realized was possible. Dr. Ebeluk says at least once a week, she meets with patients who have been misdiagnosed or undertreated. The more pigment that somebody has, um, the more it can change the way that a condition can look. What became defined as classic for any condition became what we see in lighter skin, right? But that's not necessarily classic in darker skin. She now offers a fellowship at her clinic to provide much needed perspective for dermatologists in training. Many of these conditions, even if they don't kill you, they have profound effects on quality of life. Because Shane went many years before being properly diagnosed, he may not make a full recovery. However, he remains optimistic. I'm confident that we are on the right track for treatments and that this will uh, be reversed. I'm still hopeful. We're now joined by Dr. Jenna Lester, assistant professor at UC San Francisco and founder and director of its Skin and Color, Skin of Color program. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today. Good morning. So nearly half of all dermatologists felt like they weren't prepared to treat darker skin. How can we fix this? Um, in my opinion, one of the main avenues for addressing this is addressing the gaps that exist in our dermatology education. Um, in, a, in a paper that I published in the British Journal of Dermatology, we found that there's an underrepresentation of patients with dark skin in our common dermatology teaching textbooks. So that means the photos we're using to learn what different skin conditions look like are mostly in light skin, and this can lead to misdiagnosis. Now, only 3% of the 11,000 dermatologists are black. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the barriers that these dermatologists are facing? Um, the, the barriers are numerous. One that I want to highlight is the cost of applying to become a dermatologist. So um, some analyses suggest that medical students pay $10,000 to um, even take that first step to become a dermatologist. And this is on top of what we know to be the median debt that a graduating medical student has, which is about $170,000. Wow. And we know that, um, that black and brown students disproportionately shoulder um, a graduate medical education debt. And right. so this, you can imagine how this might be more challenging for some than others. It has to be frustrating thinking, even if I go in to see somebody, I may be misdiagnosed. But your mm -hmm. advice to somebody who is seeking care would be still go. Definitely still go. Ask around. Um, I think word of mouth is really helpful in finding who, um, who is a great doctor in general. You can ask friends, neighbors, your primary care physician. Have questions um, before you go in because you know that white coat anxiety can make right. you forget everything you came in to mm -hmm. talk about. Don't be afraid to ask them and don't be afraid to get a second opinion as well. That's a totally normal thing to do if you want to have more information about the diagnosis or um, understand what all your treatment options are. Because asking around and then also maybe finding another doctor is time and money, is exactly. there kind of rules of thumb a person should ask themselves about whether they should trust whatever their initial diagnosis is. I think really trusting your gut. Um, your experience in healthcare is really important, uh, and the comfort that you feel with a person, I think, is something that should should guide how how you proceed. I, I've I've dealt with everything from discoloration, even losing my hair. Mm. And one of the questions that I asked over the phone is, "Do you treat darker skin?" Mm -hmm. And if I get the response that I need, then I know right out the gate that they have seen people like me with my skin color. 
which helps me have a little bit more comfort when I walk through that door. Yeah, that's, I think that's great advice. In, in every aspect, diversity is so important. Yeah, representation. Exactly. For sure. Dr. Jenna Lester, thank you so much. Thank